Hello, everybody. I hope you are back to your seats. We are beginning with the next session from Chennai chapter. So we have a session talk on the topic value innovation through agile lean strategy by Krishna Shivarama Krishna. He is a digital transformation coach at FE Fund Info. So before starting the session, let me thank our founding sponsor, Innovation Roots. Innovation Roots is a leading consulting and training service provider helping organizations to achieve business agility and beyond. It is one of the leader and pioneer in niche publishing service and well known for content collaboration with global thought leaders, authors and creators. For more information, visit the website www.innovationroots.com. So by the do's and don'ts, please join five minutes early. Use high quality speakers and headphones for better sound quality. Please keep yourself muted and video disabled as this may cause disturbance. Please post your questions on the chat box. Facilitator will facilitate into reading, reading out the questions. Please fill the feedback forms after the event to help us understand more about the event management. We appreciate your cooperation. So feedback links have been posted on the chat. Please make use of it. Okay. So with this, I will welcome Krishna. Over to you, Krishna. Yeah, thanks Agile Network India and thanks uh, Prashant and thanks to the uh, wonderful participant. Yeah, uh, I'm here to, you know, mutually just share the thought process and thought exchanges. I'll just share my screen one moment. Yeah. Yeah, let me know if the screen is visible, Prashant. Yes, yes, it's visible. You just put it on the presentation mode. Yeah. Yeah, uh, thank you everyone. And I know it's a Sunday evening back to back session. So I will make it, uh, you know, crisp and interactive. And I require your uh, uh, help in, you know, being uh, interactive as well, actually. Uh, thank you. Uh, like Prashant said in the chat boxes, you can put and, you know, once in a while, you can just uh, share your thoughts as well. Yeah, okay. So uh, the, the topic is about, uh, you know, the uh, kind of uh, practicing aspects of agile and lean strategies, as in, you know, how to improve the business value and how to get the highest operational uh, uh, efficiency and then you know exceed uh, customer satisfaction to the delight level so uh, i know all of us are in uh, uh, you know working either as an agile coach or a po or you know different pm or whatever roles scrum masters so welcome you all yeah so i just wanted to uh, start with a quick uh, you know one minute story so that you know uh, we don't get this uh, you know monotonous uh, and uh, you know monologue thing so, you know, about coaching, I always quote this uh, anecdote. There was one, uh, uh, yeah, uh, you were able to hear me, uh, Prashant. Is it audible? Hello. Can anyone respond? Yeah, you, you are audible, very much audible. Yeah, okay. Okay, yeah. See, uh, there was uh, about coaching, you know, there was one uh, village, uh, Zamindar was there. He wanted to educate his son uh, in mathematics because his son was weak. So he was looking out for a coach, Max coach. And he went and he uh, found out one Max coach and he took him to her, uh, him. And he said, sir, uh, why don't you teach my son about Max? He said, fine, because he doesn't have any option, the coach, because he was a village Zamindar. So he, he accepted. After three months, the Samindar came and, uh, uh, you know, uh, like, you know, we do retro and retrospective. After three months, he came to check out, you know, how his son is doing. He asked, sir, how my son is doing at uh, Max? He said, uh, you know, he's doing really great. So can I check uh, his skill uh, with a simple question? Please go ahead. All means you can ask your uh, son any questions on Max. Then his, uh, Samindar asked his son, son, tell me what is 4 plus 9? To which uh, um, uh, his son replied, it is 15. Then... Uh, uh, the Max coach kind of clapped and, you know, what a brilliant boy and answered. So very confused, uh, you know, the village head said, sir, why are you applauding, uh, you know, incorrect answer? Uh, to which uh, Max coach said, you know, you are coming after the third sprint, after three months. You should have come after the first sprint. That is after the first month, 
when I asked him the same question, what is 4 plus 9, he said it is banana. Then after the second sprint, after, uh, you know, second month, I asked the uh, same question, he said it is, uh, you know, idli. Uh, then now you are saying, uh, now he is saying some number and that number is also uh, bigger than addition of two numbers, right? So uh, why I am saying this is basically there are different teams at different level. Okay, uh, because you will see, especially in a company where there are lots of legacy products and you know coming into first time agile adaptation, you will find this kind of uh, uh, you know uh, improvement. But finally, if you uh, what happened to that story was after fifth sprint, not only his son was able to tell uh, the right answer as 13. In fact, he went on to say about you know it is sum of the squares of two primary numbers. That is two squared plus uh, uh, three squared, four plus nine. So uh, he kind of formulated one uh, algorithm also. Some so from banana to algorithm. Why I'm saying is transformation takes time. Like you know, he inspected and adapted. He was able to bring it down. So this is what you know. Uh, I approached this uh, in multiple uh, ways, and I was able to tell the story and you know make people feel that you know we uh, 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 you know adaptation takes time, and we need to be little bit patient. So don't ask me all the questions at the fifth sprint. You will have to wait for 20th sprint to get full answers. So that is the way it went on. Okay, team. Yeah, now, having said that, I know if it is going to be a real time uh, in the conference room, I could probably see you, some of you laughing. But unfortunately, you know, we cannot see. I'm just seeing my slide. So I am not able to see, you know, any of the faces. Nevertheless, you can, you know, share your uh, responses in the chat boxes. Okay. Uh, now I wanted to understand from all of you, so uh, can one or two of you or you know maybe two or three of you can tell what are the barriers to agility you can you can type it also prasant can you know read it out to me uh, in that case i will just give 30 seconds for this 30 to 40 seconds what are the barriers to implementing agility fear of failure fear of failure yeah any other thing is it the only one response sorry i just checked it up uh, in the screen oh, private message i don't know how to see that actually private message Please put it in the uh, public uh, message only. Old school leadership behavior mindset. Excellent. Yeah. Animesh Rajay. Yeah. Any other uh, answers? Lack of alignment and collaboration. Excellent. Manish uh, Srivatsa. Yeah. I think uh, uh, hierarchy. Absolutely. Uh, we can't uh, go wrong with that. Yeah, I think the, all these are all really, you know, uh, uh, very, very valid inputs and we come across these uh, planning issues as a real challenges in our workplace. Completely agreed, actually. So, uh, I okay, I just wanted to park the, uh, my response to that. I will just go to the next slide. So, uh, let me know again when I get back to slide team. You know, uh, some of you can just tell me, you know, you are able to see this uh, transition yeah, of this visible, slide. Visible. Excellent, excellent. So we, we just saw that, you know, like, you know, Ohm's law, uh, I mean, we tell that, you know, voltage is, you know, directly proportional to uh, innovation is, direct, uh, I mean, uh, uh, current is directly proportional to voltage and inversely proportional to resistance, right? So I just modified this to uh, reflect our, uh, you know, agile implementation initiative. Like innovation is directly proportional to value added inputs and inversely proportional to resistance to change, right? The less the resistance, you get more innovation. On uh, more value added inputs, you know, everybody is coming together as a work as a one team culture and we get more of innovation, right? So that is what it is. Okay. Now, before answering the questions to barriers to agility, so uh, uh, you have in front of your screen, F1 pit stop. Okay. Uh, do you know any one of you can, uh, what is the uh, uh, pit stop time <coughs> uh, record in the last two to three years, the record? <coughs> Can you type it in the chat box? What is the fastest pit stop any team has achieved? It can be approximate. Don't worry about the actual time. 
10 seconds excellent prasant thank you for the quick response any other uh, 18 seconds any other any other 10 18 <clears throat> Okay, you can keep it coming. I will just go to the slide. I, I, I moved to the slide, uh, uh, you know, window. Hope you are all able to see that. See, actually, now uh, it is uh, uh, 1.92 seconds. Uh, McLaurin has achieved a couple of years back uh, in the formally, actually, in the informal training and the uh, testing, say, they, they have even uh, reached, you know, much lesser than that. See, actually, within this 1.92 seconds, they are all uh, able to uh, you know achieve all these things and more like you know raising the uh, car to using the jacks and then removing the tires all the four tires and changing the four tires back wing readjustments mechanical adjustments cleaning the uh, driver's uh, visor and many more things and um, uh, I just wanted to you know remind you there are 21 people who are involved in this operation uh, just wanted to make a point here uh, 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 friends actually it takes two seconds to say 1.92 seconds okay to spell it but to implement so many actions you know it, it takes only 1.92 seconds so why i said this you know before is you know we were talking about so many challenges and barriers actually i kind of insinuated your mindset uh, uh, to make you think that okay there are uh, barriers to agility but yes there are there but we can easily overcome by you know getting uh, 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 you know uh, motivation and inspirational from uh, our own implementation uh, through our practices plus you know these kind of things you know completely this operation is manual operation nothing is automatic uh, you know uh, auto, um, automated at all okay you know another thing i just wanted to add you is actually we know all of us have worked through you know a remote uh, way of working right from february 2020 till now at least 90 percent of us if someone was to say uh, in January 2020, entire world, you know, entire workforce in the SME segment, Fortune 500 segment, big, larger organization will work, you know, lakhs and lakhs and millions of people throughout the world in the uh, remote uh, way. None of us would have, uh, you know, really believed actually. Like, you know, in the uh, 1983 movie, that series, Chika's character, uh, that Jeeva says, Kya uh, Pahalya Ramara, Captain. So, like, you know, you would have thought, you know, why this person, you know, what kind of mad this person, the entire world is going to work for two years. Why I am bringing down, uh, to this point is, team, uh, you know, it is possible. Actually, we are naturally agile. Only thing is the mindset that, you know, we are thinking it is not possible for us to get agility into practice. You would have easily seen from the F1 experience, what just you, you saw, and then, you know, all of us have worked. And, you know, there are three CEOs like Mark Zuckerberg, and uh, uh, Dan Gershon and you know one senior uh, person at the VP they are all vouched for the productivity and the innovation and the ways of working and seeing this as an opportunity all of us also seen initially there were some kind of teething problem in March April May 2020 now we are all completely set we are completely adapted nobody would have thought so when uh, there is a uh, you know emergency hits we, we become automatically agile and we transform into agility so this is what you know we can keep in mind throughout the entire session team yeah good so i don't know about questioning pattern uh, there are uh, you know uh, uh, 10 minutes which are parked towards the end so we can just you know keep on you know uh, sharing your uh, questions and prasant will facilitate towards the end thank you team i am just moving to the next thing okay towards the uh, next uh, uh, you know slide you will see that you know there are outcomes and outputs okay uh, normally uh, we are so uh, you know uh, uh, aligned with you know someone has really put you know misalignment we are aligned with more towards the development uh, metrics and development dashboards like we talk about velocity we talk about 10 hour on time cycle time then pre prod uh, uh, defects and post production defects and then you know uh, slc sla degree and so forth and so on but how many of us know okay out of the number of uh, PBIs or the increments, PB, uh, uh, you know, uh, product increments that are delivered, how much of the uh, product increments are used by the uh, users or the customers, how much of them have been monetized, and how many users have brought new users uh, by the quality of our work and the responses uh, to customer questions uh, by our support team. So, 
did we uh, you know take much uh, uh, data on that not much we only get to that towards the you know advanced stages of the sprints actually uh, that means you know after the 30th or 40th sprint so there needs to be a, a shift in terms of looking at the system as a whole like there is a upstream development downstream business and down to downstream is the user and the customer so all put together we need to see a bigger picture so i just gave some examples here outcomes are what the uh, the user uh, you know expects the feature to do and the uh, outputs are kind of features for example if i say uh, there is a uh, you know uh, alarm uh, alarm in our ms team or you know in our iphone or android phone that is a feature but what is the outcome of that or the functionality is you know that it get, gets gives as a reminder so we get reminded to perform a action uh, okay so that is the functionality or an outcome so outcome is more important than the output okay then uh, because we as a technical people will be able to understand the feature and functionality but when it comes to the uh, you know the the actual user they may not understand uh, you know the technical aspects of the feature so we need to always keep in mind the different personas and the different user groups those are going to work or work with the or uh, use uh, the the features or the uh, functionalities that we are delivering so with that in mind so i just gave some examples that came to my mind actually output is a feature when we say we have an integrated email client in our uh, uh, you know ms team or uh, microsoft office or whatever it is it is a feature but how do you convert that as a functionality as an outcome okay i am a businessman a small time businessman i am traveling in a flight i am in a flight launch or i am traveling in a train or in a car so uh, I, I should be able to know that okay while i am traveling i should be able to talk to my team at my office i should be able to talk to my family i will be able to talk to my friends i will be able to uh, you know browse through whatever uh, you know order food and i should be able to send mails to all my friends family so these are all the functionality the usage so we need to keep in mind the persona uh, more than the feature per se so if you say integrated uh, mail client application it does not mean anything to the sme user you need to talk their language so device your dod dor according to that period so coming to the requirement same thing usage impact okay uh, uh, see, uh, okay, suppose you are using, uh, uh, for example, some kind of health, uh, 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 you know, um, uh, feature. Like, you know, uh, we have uh, the automatic health uh, pulse check, you know, uh, it checks the BP and the heartbeat rate and sometimes temperature and oxygen level and all. So, there are different user segments, right? You know, a person who is walking on the park, a person who is driving, a person who is eating, a CEO, he goes to the next uh, uh, meeting within five minutes so he wants to know how his pulse uh, uh, rate is or how his heartbeat is functioning so according to the different usage and the conditions and the environment the people are in we need to keep our user stories designed with the non-functional requirements as well team yeah that is another point i wanted then release okay output you know it is uh, uh, release is an output whereas outcome is a user engagement i already touched upon that then output is a story point okay number of story points delivered outcome is what is the roi okay as a as a ola or a uber uh, uh, application developer i have developed a, a, a you know a feature you know that enables uh, a parents to uh, find out where their sons or daughters are you know or, or they are there which point in location because they can share the tracking or uh, map uh, from the uh, person daughter or son to the parent that means the usage the ROI return on investment as a parent we feel happy okay our kid is safe they are sorting from Mannanagar to uh, let's say you know Santom so they are they just cross the uh, Vadapalni junction they cross the Gindi so they will be happy to know that they are uh, getting to the alma mater you know properly to the you know Anna university so see this is the ROI I, as a parent I get out of the story points whatever the you know map uh, functionality it is delivered tracking functionality is delivered so we need to focus more on outcome than the ROI okay so you you will see that I think the, the it is very self-explanatory you know now agile doesn't permit this kind of a siloed uh, uh, you know mindset okay sure glad the hole is not at your end it is not uh, it is going to be another two or three minutes before these guys also get sinking yeah so 
uh, this is what the uh, beautiful agile mindset is all about team okay now coming to good outcomes okay we have talked about outcomes uh, how do you develop an approach towards outcome based planning outcome based implementation outcome based retro outcome based review i just give few example i won't go through everything anyway uh, uh, prashant uh, or the uh, and i will share the deck with you later okay okay i mean see we all know there is a jira or a devops we all know uh, the technology we know the testing we know the development we know the uh, business analytics and uh, we know requirement everything is available training but what is more important is how to make the team make feel that okay they have a purpose they have a feeling of uh, you know belongingness to uh, to the project that they are working in okay i just took you know for example okay you need to make uh, the sprint team uh, members sprint team or agile team members uh, a sense of purpose you know you should have a, a way of celebrating small small achievement make them feel that they are connected okay you have uh, uh, mr developer or you know uh, mr tester you know you have developed this functionality or tested this functionality do you know it is going to be used in the payment gateway integration module so every time somebody presses while you know purchasing an item from the ad cart when you when you press that button you know you, you will feel happy that you know you have developed that button so this kind of emotional bonding you know the eq has to be brought in so you need to appreciate whatever be that i just took an example similarly you know a, a, a culture of genuinely you know uh, um, uh, appreciating by giving star performers even for the small achievement some kind of recognition rewards and the extra meals and then have some creative workshops like a hackathon uh, you know once in a while uh, it need not be you know related to work you can just tell them why don't you develop an automation uh, 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 automation uh, you know uh, api uh, you know something which helps us to track you know where we are or you know uh, how leaves are you know uh, 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 people are taking leave whether in monday or friday something which helps the teams to uh, exactly get to a point of planning properly similarly include everyone uh, uh, okay see here it is very very important uh, that you know mental health of employees is more important uh, because you know we have been working for two years from home so do you know uh, whether they are happy uh, how do you say that i think i just joined last uh, session before five minutes and the, the speaker was uh, you know mentioning a very uh, right point that you know we should have video uh, talks and you know virtual coffee if possible sometime once in a quarter also uh, you know uh, friday fun activity something like that so that the uh, uh, people are felt uh, uh, you know not only in the retro uh, by sharing and caring so it is uh, life life is there beyond the uh, uh, work also right so uh, maybe you know you can find out you know what is your post time activity and uh, uh, you know how are you uh, your health how do you keep yourself motivated and always you know uh, uh, keep you know energetic you know all those things can happen so just you know ensure that by having a small health check four or five questions just ask them and collect the data and if there is going to be someone wants okay i need to play and i'm not able to find out uh, you know uh, badminton course nearby home someone else can come and help them similarly whatever it is you know i want to do a certification someone else can come and you know help them so that way keep them motivated beyond work actually so that is another thing and balance features and support i think we know it is a vuca world and we get you know uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, multiple uh, task uh, uh, switches you know in between when we start an initiative suddenly there are a lot of influx of support tickets from the previous version uh, previous delivery uh, and previous uh, releases and all so how do you manage that we know there are many different techniques for example 80 percent you uh, keep it for uh, uh, you know present uh, sprint uh, uh, backlog for the present sprint and 20 percent you keep it for you know a uh, bug fixing and you know uh, take debts uh, uh, reduction or uh, BAUs, uh, uh, business as usual, uh, uh, tasks, etc., etc. So that way you should apply your uh, uh, retrospective and review inputs from the previous sprint into the current sprint. That way you can kind of manage. See, VUCA is very, very important. It is not going to go anywhere. Volatility, uncertainty, and uh, you know complexity, and uh, also ambiguity. Uh, because uh, as I told you that you know uh, uh, there. Are that yeah differentiate between then uh, short term and long term goals yeah i think for that uh, you know we know that there are different models talking about mvps 
and quick wins and the long term strategy how do you kind of combine and you know have effective mechanisms to uh, you know uh, balance that so these are all very important so this way we can focus on outcome based uh, uh, outcome based goals rather than you know output based uh, so that you know as i told you we will be able to uh, meet the uh, objectives of all the stakeholders not only development stakeholders yeah and uh, just uh, i will just take another two or three slides you know uh, uh, then you know we'll get into the discussion mode yeah see uh, if for achieving all these things actually uh, uh, communities and collaboration is very very important i think we cannot overstate the importance of that right uh, so because uh, uh, especially in the larger organization uh, when we start off uh, any new initiative uh, with so much resistance from the different quarters uh, we will have uh, you know different packets of excellences and we won't have consistent uh, uh, you know adaptation of any initiative not only agile lean or any process or information security so for that we need to have a strong community so uh, we have uh, we, we have so much uh, uh, like you know uh, community of practices like you know front end uh, uh, chapters back end chapters and then we have a technology chapter then we have sap chapters then ux uh, ui uh, then you know uh, we have uh, multiple uh, different chapters and just what should be the aim of these chapters we all know that we need to come and share what are the best practices one team has adapted and come and not only the best practices we should encourage teams to come and share the pains they have undergone and what are all the best practices they have kind of evolved so that it can help the other teams and same way these teams who are having the pains they can get help from the other teams so this is what the importance of uh, you know community of practices and believe me uh, uh, in uh, one of my uh, engagements you know earlier uh, it was like 5000 people engagement we are able to transform almost 3000 to 3500 uh, uh, you know member team uh, within one year to kind of really out of 4 to 3.5 level actually because of the community of practices if you had adapted old ways of you know uh, going through uh, uh, just team by team and you know keeping it siloed uh, improvements it would not have been possible even in three years time okay now not only community of practice team it is more important to have cross-functional team as well cross-functional team as in okay you have one front end chapter uh, and you have api chapter and then a ux chapter and you have you know sap multiple chapter okay we have formed uh, even those are all communities are siloed only we have formed a cross-functional team by picking up two to three people from each of the uh, teams and made them as a cross-functional team thereby uh, you know these cross-functional team are able to understand what is the overall requirements and initiative or a product will have so they will be able to give a feedback to a new initiative during the product roadmap and product uh, design itself right from the architecture stage itself okay in my in our earlier implementation we have faced the problem in the infrastructure area in the technology area in the api area in the uh, cloud area so we, they were able to reduce the implementation of the similar uh, initiative next time by you know 30 to 40 percent so this way we were able to quickly pass on the benefits to consistently across all the verticals and the uh, groups thereby uh, you know uh, uh, every teams were like having an advantage of starting from knowledge yeah it was very much possible yeah this is very important okay i would just put it in a, a another you know simple way to remember okay if it is a larger organization even a, a medium or small organization uh, you know there may be a mandate from the leadership okay uh, go and fold the sky so folding the sky means you know applying uh, the uh, uh, initiatives implementing across the 10000 people it's not going to be easy instead i would say create uh, you know resorts okay now the heat is there and uh, they wanted to fold the sky instead of that create beaches and create resorts so thereby you know creating resorts and beaches you will be able to you know develop one increment over the another increment thereby you can cover the entire beach you know and create a shade actually instead of trying to fold the sky so try one thing at a time and then more important how you can institutionalize or take it to all the other teams through the communities so that is the way it will help and it has really helped in our uh, multiple uh, experience you know when we dealt with uh, uh, multiple verticals team okay this i will skip okay 
I, I already touched upon the user personas. You know, how do you identify different user personas? I already touched you, you know, uh, not only the user group, whether it is a university student or a, or a you know, the, the software developer or, you know, someone who wants to do a research. You are trying to develop an educational uh, uh, course. You need to meet across multiple uh, users and the multiple personas within the users. And many times, uh, we just uh, you know when we write uh, uh, user story we uh, we capture uh, you know functional requirement non-functional requirement uh, sometimes we tend to uh, forget about uh, performance requirements also we capture but what we don't capture is you know uh, security requirements you know privacy policy gdpr requirements uh, it will be uh, used to buy uh, only uh, the financial and fintech industries are the european based uh, customers but now it is very important for everyone to use so we need to have a good brainstorming during uh, you know refinement and come up with a good dvr and dvd and if you miss that uh, you know uh, uh, sometimes we may be able to achieve our sprint goals but after fourth or fifth sprint you know when we will be struggling to achieve the sprint goal of the sixth sprint but that will code and impact the sprint number 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 because we have not factored in some of the information security requirements or the privacy policy requirements. So we need to have a good understanding on this domain personas. This is where your CFTs and the COPs and the knowledge and the training and the rigor that you got uh, your team is very helpful. One additional point which I wanted to share here is, uh, you know, we have uh, uh, some companies have implemented already one day in two weeks you know 10 days a sprint day one day as a learning day where we go and you know uh, uh, encourage our team to do certifications and you know get a domain knowledge and you know uh, uh, you know observe and watch the uh, videos uh, from the cfts and the cops and uh, you know cross check between you know uh, uh, other people as to if they have some doubts so you won't believe uh, it has kind of improved the productivity up to 20 percent so with nine days they were able to do more uh, productivity by increasing the productivity by 20 percent uh, than they were able to do in the uh, uh, nine days because they felt okay my company is recognizing there is a need for me to upskill because uh, it, it will be good if i uh, use all the 10 days to work uh, and then you know for the short time but over a period of time when i go to you know uh, cloud migration or whatever scaling up of uh, the implementation I need to, uh, you know, upskill myself. So, likewise, you know, see, I'm not saying this is the only way to, uh, uh, you know, get upskill, uh, upskillment. Uh, we just found that, you know, having a learning day worked out better for us after few sprints. So, there are multiple ways. So, understanding multiple user personas, having CFTs, and then, uh, you know, community of practices, it helped us, you know, multiple ways actually. Okay, then uh, people agility. So we have talked about, you know, uh, understanding the business, business value and how to see downstream and upstream and develop a culture of learning, everything we have seen. Then how do you, uh, you know, make people, uh, uh, point, uh, you know, make them feel that, okay, they have a purpose and they are, uh, uh, they are kind of self-organized and they have become autonomous in what they uh, try to do. There are few uh, things, you know, which uh, uh, it's out there. I will just take a couple of examples. Okay, leading from the front. Okay, many times, uh, you know, uh, the discussion is about, you know, whether the initiative should be, you know, top down or a bottom up. Actually, bottom up helps more. As I told you, you know, create beaches instead of trying to, you know, fold the skies. You know, that way you will know that you are improving upon, you know, providing shades to your beaches. You know, rather than, you know, trying to uh, uh, work with the entire sky of, you know, 10,000 people and, you know, try to transform. So uh, always uh, it should be from the bottom up uh, and top down both ways. Actually, we cannot say it is top down and bottom up. Leadership should be completely supporting and they should also be a part of your uh, ceremonies once in three months or one month so that you can take back to them. Okay, what you have done good and what you are struggling. See, all the impediments we cannot solve on our own, right? So there are some obstacles which we cannot solve because uh, we may be uh, waiting for a test data input uh, our service provider did not provide or we need an additional uh, vm uh, uh, for uh, you know which we are uh, not uh, getting now we need additional server space all these things you know within the scrum uh, master agile coach we, we cannot uh, take a decision on that so 
leadership involvement they will know that okay where are the obstacles and the pain point they will be able to support so it is neither top down or not bottom up it is all through we need to follow the approach similarly you know a self organization means it is not just assignment of uh, you know uh, tickets by individuals okay during the planning day okay uh, developer a you know assigns uh, picks up one user story developer b picks up that is really good but more than that it is not uh, one developer can veto a process down uh, okay uh, uh, even there may be nine people who can say that okay this is great approach but if one developer finds that okay because of his knowledge in the domain and he has been involved in multiple releases and he is a t i mean he is a full stack guy he says guys there is a problem with this approach and i i kind of you know propose an alternative approach so it is not majority it is about consensus and logic so this is what it is okay then uh, t shaped skills and i talked about purpose and mastery as well so all these people uh, uh, you know agility is more more important and there is one highlighted quote uh, which you know richard bronson has talked about train people well enough so that uh, they can live treat them well enough so that they don't have to okay i think i cannot uh, explain this enough there have been uh, instances where we were able to uh, you know uh, do some impossible tasks like the f1 because of the motivation and the coaching conversation we had with the teams uh, uh, you know there could be very very simple uh, tips which i can give see for example uh, when you ask in a retro or uh, or, or a, you know review or any other team meeting you always sign that you know 80% of the people are kind of uh, uh, you know uh, uh, opening up sometimes 60 people are kind of opening up so it is not enough only 80% open uh, percent opens up you need to ensure that all the 100 percent are engaged so for that you need to take them out for a coffee and fight try to understand uh, through a coaching conversation what made them uh, you know not engaged do we, do are they struggling with something uh, you can simply ask coaches like that uh, uh, you know mike you know you how can you you know uh, bring the performance that you did in two two sprints before what is the blocker there then he will be happy okay this guy is not talking only about the current sprint he has acknowledged me in two sprints back i have done a good job okay then he will open open it up no no i have a health issue and i have some problems uh, at my home or maybe you know um, i have a problem in learning i could not focus then you know you can just you know pat him and give him uh, what is required to help him to get through uh, through your uh, hr team or you know our uh, our own skill uh, skilling and etc etc so coaching conversation is very important to make everybody participate and engage him so this is the other thing i wanted to talk yeah and finally i will just leave it uh, with that i think uh, we are just touching 440 so prioritization is very very important okay what are the uh, factors i think we all know but still i wanted to give so value is very very important you know how users perceive the business value in terms of uh, you know npv or roi net profit value or return on investments and cost are we able to consistently deliver products and solutions at the reduced cost to the customer so that the customer gets a competitive edge uh, in his uh, uh, you know business space and new knowledge kind are we able to upskill our team uh, to the full stack level and then you know contain the risk so these are very very important yeah i will just go to the final uh, uh, you know slide uh, because i wanted to keep the uh, time box you know true to the agile coach uh, role that we are playing so cultivating high performance team so i always found this uh, uh, you know uh, first thing when you when you kind of uh, uh, apply your basic scrum principle you get the faster results right i mean it may not be a right result but you get faster results then you kind of uh, improve uh, uh, you kind of keep on improving level by level increment by increment you get the right result you don't stop with that then you apply uh, you know all your uh, feedback and then you get remarkable results then finally you reach a level where teams and individual growth uh, beyond the business value okay they feel that okay i am connected to the product i am developing and lots of uh, you know people are using my uh, product i have developed one feature in that so that's what we saw uh, in the f1 uh, as well as you know uh, uh, the example of uh, the, the post covid hybrid model you know now uh, we are all automatically aligned to that kind of level yeah so basically from the basic quick win to the 
a team that can do anything so that is possible provided we follow the right approach yeah then uh, team that can do anything and finally uh, this is my favorite slide and this is the real last slide yeah so okay when you don't uh, when you don't improve uh, uh, every day uh, your process is performing at 0.99 that means slightly uh, reduced to uh, 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 level than you know perfect level one level you, you are kind of performing on 99 uh, percent but you are skipping every day one practices then you at the end of the year you will leave, reach only three percent of uh, uh, improvement you keep on getting declining if you don't do any improvement in the center uh, uh, you know approach you just be uh, you know at the same level at the end of the year 365th day but if you keep on imp improving improvising and you know upskilling in all the dimensions like you know technical agility process agility business agility cultural agility leadership agility at the end of the year you will be like able to achieve 3800 37.78 times actually 3800 percent of improvement you can achieve so it is up to you if you skip you go to three percent if you keep on improving one one percent each day for 365 days you will reach 3800 percent team so this is one uh, uh, thought i just want you to leave with yeah yeah i have done uh, uh, with my uh, session prasant and team yeah, over to you thank krishna that was really uh, energetic and very powerful talk so guys if you have any questions for krishna please post it or you would like to, anybody would like to ask we have still five minutes to go so krishna as we are just krishna you're there yeah i'm okay. there i'm i'm there very much yeah i am there yeah. okay just uh, So Krishna, uh, just as people are thinking about a question, yeah. Uh, so I think you are off camera, so that's why I got a bit confused. If you can come on. Yeah, camera, I switched on the camera. Okay. Yeah, you can see. Yeah. So, um, so getting rid of all those values now. Uh, just I had a question, quick question, and as I was hearing it. Uh, to make enable the team to get this particular transparency and all uh, how difficult it was when things moved remote in fact for you what was uh, some of one of the critical challenge you faced when things moved so drastically to yeah okay during the initial uh, covid times right uh, prashant yeah so during the initial yeah. covid times or uh, once it became remote all of are gone remote yeah. Yeah, excellent. Uh, yeah, one thing is, of course, infra. Uh, uh, infra was like uh, very, very uh, providing and ensuring that uh, uh, the VPN connectivity and the network and, uh, uh, you know, from the office perspective and business perspective and uh, especially for larger organizations, it was very difficult to, you know, enable the kind of environment and the speed and the network that we used to have at the office. That was a real major challenge. And second challenge was like, uh, uh, you know, uh, entering into the uh, uh, spaces of homes uh, for the employees and how to make them focused uh, because it was very easy to uh, see, uh, I mean, uh, more, uh, more people when in a conference room, uh, what is the problem they are having and we, we can kind of get hooked to the same central screen. But here we don't know like you know what other people are feeling uh, because some people will be uh, you know off the camera some people will be on the camera so we only hear their voice but there are more things you know beyond the voice so uh, that was the second problem so we understood that and we said that there is going to be some kind of drop in the performance level so i just told uh, my uh, team and my uh, bosses and the reporting managers please don't expect the same level of performance in the next two months okay so uh, it is going to be that we have set it and we have given them the reasons just like that you know the infra and you know how the uh, uh, people are going to take it up in the home so luckily uh, uh, it, it they kind of accepted 
and uh, i was able to then tell them slowly we were able to fix in the first six weeks we were able to have a uh, you know ms team set up and the infra was provided and all the vpns and all the security act aspects have been taken care and then we told and we set a team working agreement just like we have during office you know uh, you have to have a common timings and the video uh, uh, timings and the uh, uh, and so much and so forth and after six weeks prasant it it it, it came to a point where uh, you know we were able to figure out very importantly who are all the required people uh, in the meeting and who are all not required so we told that uh, okay uh, i mean if someone is not required to be invested in the meeting let them not be present and we will record it also see uh, during the uh, face to face we don't record here we have the option of recording also so from the difficulty and challenges slowly now it has become an opportunity actually so and uh, we were able to tell them there will be a problem and we will have to bite the bullet and take the risk and proceed forward prashant yeah this is what it is right. okay thanks so we have one question from uh, manish uh, yeah sorry not so manish samarth uh, samarth is asking what kinds of kpis to be tracked when deciding on outcomes excellent excellent that is a great question yeah i, I think uh, yeah so one is i, I would uh, suggest you know there is a, a hot framework developed by google actually uh, uh, so it is it is really talking about the uh, happiness index and the uh, you know task efficiency and the engagement and multiple you know uh, and the uh, rework basically so uh, in addition to what we track internally from the jira matrix you need to know how much of uh, the users have kind of used the deliveries and what are the feedbacks and have we been able to meet the slas of the support tickets and what are the influx tickets influx of the support tickets that have come down so basically we use the happiness index through csat and the uh, uh, customer uh, retention and how much of the time i am just taking example of the web product uh, yeah customer is spending user is spending on our uh, time on our website and have he or she brought additional customer so how we are able to map that with our velocity with our uh, cycle time and uh, uh, with our internal metrics so you can reach out to me for details i, I will be more than happy to uh, track my coordinate coordinates are with uh, prashant i will be able to yeah. tell you in a yeah, very uh, detailed way we will share you the linkedin linkedin connect uh, link of our krishna uh, or anyone interested they can join uh, krishna on linkedin and take the questions ahead okay thanks a krishna thanks krishna for a wonderful session as usual so you have been regularly giving some dynamic <laughs> sessions that's and most welcome from chennai chapter thank you very much with this thank we come to end of this particular session thank you thank you prashant thank you agile network india and thank you wonderful participant we hope you know we will get to have a physical sessions you know soon <laughs> that will uh, be more uh, true. i interact everyone thank you everyone for that <laughs> thank you very much yes.